guys, so I am back and I'm talking with one of my friends, Erin Evans. Uh, yay! <laughs> um, you may know Erin from... Um, I am the author of the Brimstone Angels Saga for mm -hmm. Forgotten Realms, um, which is a six book series. About tieflings and demons and devils and great stuff that's like that. So wonderful. <laughs> that's so wonderful. I remember you were talking about uh, really enjoying like exploring the tiefling aspect of things. Yeah, and also the dragonborn are a big part of it, and Ooh. building dragonborn culture out was like my favorite part of working on those books. It's isn't it wonderful when you get a chance to take something that's like a little seed in the in yeah. the game system, and then you get to through the fiction really. Yeah, you find out. it and you're like, I see why for game, this is very interesting, but why for world? How did this happen? Exactly, exactly. That's fantastic. So you guys may be more familiar with Erin's work than I was before I got a chance to meet her, but I've been following up on it and she's an amazing, amazing author. <laughs> Thank you. So what did you come out? We got to drink champagne on your behalf we yesterday. Did. It's one of the best parts about coming to retreats like this is getting to celebrate other people's triumphs too. So, so things lined up so that I... I finished a draft yesterday <gasps> oh, how on a new book, mm -hmm. um, which is my uh, my fantasy mystery kind Ooh. of series. Uh, hopefully, uh, these are all for you know. I'm kind of looking towards doing more creator-owned traditional publishing, so mm -hmm. I can talk about these now. And there's you know. If, if everything works out, it will still be a couple years before people sure. get to see them. But, Unfortunately, that's um, the problem with kind of brick and mortar publishing is there's a process you have to go through. <laughs> Finishing the book is one important step to it. Very important step that you but, have control over. Once you're done with that, then there's a whole lot of sending things out and hoping and, mm -hmm. and fixing waiting. and hoping and, and a lot of waiting. A like lot everybody else waiting. is doing the same thing, so you're, the agent's like, I have all of these books to read. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, please wait. Exactly. Um, the yeah so the the previous book that I finished is this you know big epic fantasy that just like poured all of my world building passions and um, you know big serious world moving kind of things mm -hmm. and it's harder to do when you're writing tie in because you have to you have to play nice with everybody else and if it's your thing you can go hey guess what I'm going to I'm going to blow up the world because I feel like it exactly um, so I you know it's this big serious thing and when I came to the end of it so that is something that I'm shopping around but when I came to the end of it I realized that what I really missed from writing Brimstone Angels in a lot of ways was having characters that had very like very close bantery kind of relationships um, having non-human species to build cultures around mm, because your fantasy was yeah. Yeah. human specific yeah world, everybody so. in storm of the crowns of mountain with the exception of you know nebulous spirits um it, it is human right i love and, that name the storm that crowns the right? mountain I, we were talking earlier about how hard it is to title things and the book i just finished doesn't have a great title it has mm -hmm. one that I, I i like but i know isn't gonna stick sure sure so it's and i was saying it's so hard but that, i forgot about that one i do really love the storm of crowns it, it, it reminds me of um out out here in mm -hmm. like when rainier yeah when we get the it, mount yeah. Rainier, and you, you get these clouds that form like right up at the mountaintop and they they do they crown the mountain yeah. that's such an amazing turn of phrase it's uh it's meant to be sort of um when when the rulers in this particular culture take the throne they get an epithet that's based on a vision that they have oh. and so the one of the characters is like claiming the throne and she sees this storm on the sort of big mountain the, the volcano mm -hmm. that sweeps away their enemies and so she becomes the storm that crowns the mountain oh i love that but nothing is simple i never do anything easy no, no. so it's not simple <laughs> yes we're talking about that, that like this is not your typical vying for the throne no know. it's uh it's a case where prophecy sounds like a great idea mm -hmm. like oh here's the answer but but interpretation is complex um and and you can take it really wrong and you have to think very hard about who is giving you that prophecy and what are their motives yes which if those are like kind of nebulous quantum spirits you're like of course that's all they do they give us prophecy and they're like mm, yeah sure okay thanks you don't have any ulterior <laughs> motives at things. all just everything just will work out. so that's i really fantastic. love it but then so i wanted to write something that was a little lighter and that's um this book which is it, right now I'm calling it Mortal Palimpsest, but I've been reassured, I have reassured by many people that, that that's not that's it. That's not the right, that, that, that's not, that, that, that's, that's the tentative the working tentative title. title. But that's it's fantastic. full of, it's, it's a lighter story, it's a smaller story, and it's full of, you know, this sort of 
wacky fantasy races like how delightful that, that are, they're sort of fun to kind of delve in and right. see how do these fit together and get the, the inhuman cultures mm-hmm. and, and how they developed and why they developed the way yeah. they did and stuff that is amazing I'm very excited about that and so you, you just finished up your draft of that yes that is wonderful. So today has been me um, not interrupting other people's writing time, but getting on <laughs> my writing group Slack and brainstorming um, uh, new projects. How yeah. that's also fantastic! Wow, that's that is really really cool. So what is your what's your next step with the one you just finished? Well, I've sent it out to my writing group and mm-hmm. to um, the one of the other people at the writing retreat. Ari Marvel had asked to read it as well. Fantastic. Um, We're hoping is, later to talk with Ari because he's an amazing person as well. Which is nice and necessary because um, as I've gone through this, I really love my my writing group at home um, for being able to kind of bounce ideas off of. But what that means is that there are some fairly large twists and reveals in this book, and they know all of them. So I don't know. So like, they can't, is the they reader can't going come to go? The <gasps> right. They're going to go. You know, I did get they they had them read a partial, which I because I think that that's. You know, I, I like the idea that like you push through and you have your first draft and you hand your full first draft over. But I think there's a point where you know, like something is going off the rails and I need to go back and fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, and having people who can read a partial and and respond on a partial and not go like, I need the whole thing. Yeah, right is wonderful and valuable. But so it was nice to have them look at that and and you know I had I did I did end up having to. Um, to sort of burn a couple of folks who hadn't, who didn't know, um, and then, but then having you know one of the the gals in my writing group was like, I knew, but I had started to convince myself that you did something different, and that was so exciting. <laughs> That's so, wonderful. Yes, hopefully, hopefully they'll all play out nicely. We'll have a nice quick revision and. Uh, and then I'll st- send that one out. Very cool. <laughs> well, we will put a link in the bottom for where you can find information on what Erin has done in the past with her Brimstone Angels and that sort of thing. And then as we continue to vlog over the next couple of months, hopefully we'll be able to bring you some amazing new news about <laughs> the stuff that Erin's been working on this weekend and the fantasy novel that you just finished before. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So... This is your, how many times have you been? This is my third this time. This is your third time. So you've been here basically since yeah. we started doing this. That's wonderful. So what, what keeps bringing you back? What do you enjoy about about I, Grey Haven and about coming to Writers Retreat? You know, one thing that I love them really a lot is just being able to prioritize that writing time, that creating time. Oh, no. So apparently the last little bit of the interview that I did with Erin got cut off. Erin, I am so sorry. Anyway, it's her work that we're toasting in the next little clip of the vlog. So Erin, we're thinking great things for you and really waiting to hear what happens with your new novel. Hi guys, I'm Jess here again. Uh, it's partway through the writer's retreat and it has just been such a wonderful time. I've been really, really productive. Uh, I came out here to tear a big novel that I had in half to turn it into two shorter novels. And uh, I got the first one done, so now I'm working on patching up the second half of it to really make it a book as opposed to just kind of the last half of a second book. Um, Sharing a glass of uh, champagne with one of our friends down here who finished one of their projects for the weekend. And I'm up here on the kind of crow's nest here. Uh, You can see this beautiful view behind me. Uh, There's Haystack Rock and the coast. It's just absolutely wonderful. This has just been such a fantastic time to work and to visit and um, really, really refilling the well. Absolutely fantastic. Hope you guys are all having a great time and I'm going to go get back to work. Well, when I'm done with this. <laughs> Bye. How blue am I allowed to work? You, whatever you want. I don't care. Hi, guys. So uh, I am here with Crystal Fraser, who is one of our new uh, attendees at the Writers Retreat. Um, Crystal, uh, where have folks where, where do folks find you? I know you've done such amazing stuff. <laughs> Uh, I've got a lot of work within one or two industries, mm-hmm. so if you're familiar with tabletop gaming, then you'll probably recognize me from Pathfinder. I've worked on uh, the Pathfinder module series and Pathfinder adventure pads for a while. Uh, these days I work for Green Road and Publishing on the uh, the Lazarus role-playing game, which is releasing right now, Ooh. and the Newtons and Masterminds role-playing game. Very nice. And I tracked down earlier, you and I were talking, I tracked down the hardcover of the comic book that you 
worked on for Pathfinder that you wrote for that is coming out in pre-release next month. Yes. I ordered that copy. <laughs> uh, I wrote Pathfinder Spiral of Bones, which is one of our licensed comics for Pathfinder uh, about dying and what happens when you die in a epic fantasy adventure world where death is kind of a rotating door. I love that. That sounds really fun. So what what um, have you been working on at the retreat so far this weekend? Uh, so been working on a couple of short stories. It's Ooh. a little intimidating because everyone here is a novelist and I've got a graphic novel but that's not quite the same and Working on fiction is very different than games. So, so true. So very true. And it can be, um, uh, a lot of times I've found that working on my own fiction specifically can it, if you've done a lot of freelancing, you get used to having certain parameters that are mm -hmm. defined by the company that you're working for, the materials that you're working for, the project that they've delineated out, and all that kind of goes out the window when you're doing your own stuff. And it's like, oh, and in a lot of ways, it's a lot easier to work inside constraints somebody gives you than it is to just have the whole field open to you. Exactly. There's, I mean, there's definitely, uh, there's, there's fun aspects of working mm -hmm. on your own stuff. But so you've been working on some short stories. Uh -huh. That's really great. I am looking forward to seeing what happens with well, thank that. You. That is fantastic. So, um, this is your first time out to to Greyhaven, right? Yep. I'm, it's been so cool having it's, you here. It's really been fun. It's been very great. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the first day or two, absolutely beautiful. I took some amazing footage when I was coming in from Portland. Uh, not so much today. No, no it's just been no. awful. There's been hail and uh, rain and clouds and yes. wind. But we did get to have champagne. So oh, that was lovely. Yeah, that was Aaron fantastic. finished her book. She did. That was so wonderful. <laughs> so where can folks go if they want to find out more about, because I know you're, you've got some things that are kind of in the works, but you can't really <laughs> talk about quite yet. So where do people go if they want to follow you so they can find out more about what's coming up in the next couple months when things do start opening up? Uh, well, the easiest place to follow everything I'm doing is on my Twitter, which is at Amazon Chic, which is <laughs> C-H-I-Q-U-E. Very nice. Because very I nice. don't do anything easy. No, just such. Why would you do things the way they should be done properly? <laughs> but if you want to hear about a project I have that's going to be announced soon, you should follow Oni Press. Oni Press. Okay, and that's the publishing company that uh, has something in the works, not yet talked about, right? right? And where do they find Oni Press? Oh, uh... Do they have a website? They should. Okay. So <laughs> well, yes, they have a website. I I think it's onipress.com, okay. but I don't know for sure. So I will me. go to the research and I will put that information in the links to the bottom here, so that you'll be able to find it. I really recommend that you go ahead and add them and keep your eye on that because I've heard just a little bit. And it's really <laughs> exciting. So you're gonna want to follow this I think, stuff. Did you see? You saw the sketches. Mm -hmm. I'm very I excited. Did. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for joining us, Crystal. It's been really fun oh, having you at the you. retreat. I really hope you come back next year because this has been really, really good having you here. Well, You're a great you. addition to the team. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. Um, Ari is uh, Marmel, who's the other person that's been here. He's in between mm -hmm. projects right now, and he's working really hard on some stuff, so he didn't have time to come and talk with us. But I'm going to put links to some of his stuff in so that you can see what cool things he's got coming out to. And um, tomorrow we're going to be packing up and heading home, so I'll do a little bit of blogging on the way back if the weather permits. And um, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You've got to love any interview that starts off with the question, how blue am I allowed to work? It was so wonderful hanging out with Aaron and Crystal at the Greyhaven Writers Retreat. Thanks for listening to part three of my vlog on that retreat, and be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you'll get notified when part four comes out. That's where we're going to be talking with Joseph Carricker, who's the line developer for the Blue Rose game for Green Ronin. Also, I'm going to show you one of my favorite features about the Greyhaven writing retreat. It's really